And this one's a bit of a surprise hit. Kind of came out of nowhere. And then all of a sudden, it's one of the top five Chinese movies of the year. But isn't any good? It's got some great pedigree behind it, including Si Chen Chen, the guy behind the Detective Chinatown series, who's also adapted a few other international releases for Chinese cinema, such as Sheep Without a Shepherd, which was a remake of Drisham, and Fireflies of the Sun, which was a remake of John Q. Now, this one, Lost in the Stars, is a remake of a Russian comedy, but with a thriller element. How did he go? Is this any good? Let's check out Lost in the Stars. A man is frantically searching for his missing wife while they're on holiday celebrating their one-year wedding anniversary. After 15 days, she returns, but he insists that the woman is not his wife. All the evidence points to the contrary, though. After a chance encounter with a top lawyer, he enlists her help to find out the truth, and they discover that a crime syndicate that kidnaps rich people may be involved with her disappearance. But the more they investigate, the more mysteries and truths they uncover. Now, I have to admit, this was one of the thriller movies that I really, really wanted to fall in love with. And visually, it's a, it's a very impressive looking thriller that follows the thriller playbook by the numbers. It's got, it's got everything. The use of color, done. Um, lots of red herrings, done. They're there. Um, planting multiple seeds of doubt in the viewer's mind about the characters and what's going on, done. This movie excels in what it needs to do as a minimum for a thriller. Now, the first half of the movie is great, um, but and it's really intriguing, actually. It really will get you kind of interested, which is what a good thriller should do. It should spend that first bit of time just kind of trapping you in to want to watch the rest of it. But then there's a fundament, fundamental shift halfway through the movie um, as more of it gets revealed. And it's, it's a kind of shift where if you've watched a lot of thriller movies, you're kind of going to it's kind of where you're going to start to tune out in the film because a lot of what starts to get revealed starts to become very ho-hum. Now, a real suspension of disbelief is needed for this film. And anyone who watches thrillers knows that there, there is an element of suspension of disbelief you have to kick in. I mean, you watch The Usual Suspects and you think, was he really Kaiser Sose all along? That's kind of something that happens in this film. You have to kind of really be willing to let the movie take you all the way to, to fully get into what happens in this film. Then disappointingly, there's a post-credit sequence that happens that kind of, I think it was unnecessary. It was completely unnecessary. And not only that, but it adds a lot of confusion to the plot because it makes the meeting of certain characters not make any sense. Now, I think it's time for Si Chen Cheng, the producer of this film, to try and do something original. Now, he, like I said in the intro, he's the man behind the Detective Chinatown series and a very well-loved, very popular series. And he's also had, tried his hand at the two other thrillers that I previously mentioned, Fireflies in the Sun and Sheep Without a Shepherd. But now that he's done three remakes, I think he really needs to try and figure out how to make a Chinese thriller. And... And by that, I mean he needs to work within the confines of Chinese film censorship, and he needs to do that without taking an existing story that already has a really good ending and modifying that to fit into the Chinese style. So we, in uh, Sheep Without a Shepherd, we lost the fact that the father gets away with the crime. That's what happens in Drisham. And, and it kind of it really changed the ending of Sheep Without a Shepherd, knowing that Everything that happened in the, in the, throughout the whole film was pointless. And you kind of get the same thing here. Now, I haven't seen the original Russian movie that this movie is based on, so I don't actually know how that ends. And I don't actually know anything about the film other than it's a comedy that he's turned into a thriller. But I'm pretty sure that the way that this movie ends doesn't really reflect the way that the Russian film ends. And specifically... And it's typical with Chinese thrillers. I don't like those walls of text at the end that come up and explain punishments that are dished out to everyone involved in the movie. The good thing about it is in the future, if film regulations ever change in China, I mean, that, that's a quick edit out of the film and uh, a new version of the film can be printed and, and the audience doesn't have to put up with that kind of crap anymore. But 
it exists in this film, and it is a shame. And that's what I like to refer to as the Chinese style ending, where you get this really great film all the way through, and then you get the big hand of the government at the end telling you all the punishments that get dished out for every character in the film who's done even something slightly wrong. And it's debatable in your head whether you think any of the characters have actually done anything wrong or not. Now, I want to leave you on a bit of a light note. Are you a fan of the Ford Ranger? Well, you might enjoy the scene in the film of the the F-150 Raptor doing a bit of drifting and a bit of racing around uh, around the streets and the areas of the movie. Um... They're treating, the, they're treating the car like it's, it's a sprinter, which is just a bit odd. So I, I just thought it was a nice little side touch to say, oh, I like looking at Ford Raptors. That they, they look like a pretty cool car. But just to see it, uh, you know, the way that they thrash it around in this movie, it's just a little bit odd. But then again, it probably suits the whole movie. So in conclusion, um, if you were new to thrillers, or, or, you know, this is one of the first thrillers you've ever watched, you probably would think this is a really, really good film. And I don't blame you for that, because it has some really good elements of building up a lot of tension in the film. But if you're someone who's been watching thrillers for a long time, and of course there's the the other thriller classics, like The Usual Suspects, like Seven, like Basic Instinct, um, this movie just pales compared to a properly defined thriller. Um, You've got the censorship that ruins it, um, and an idea that can't fully be explored because it has to end a certain way. But it had potential. And a couple of little edits uh, would probably elevate this movie a little bit higher than the rating I'm giving it, which I think is a generous three and a half stars. It probably should be three, but generous three and a half because I I did like the performances of all of the actors in the film. Um, And and I do like the way that everyone plays their part in the film. It's great. Uh, Nini was great. Janice Mann overacts her character, which makes sense at the end of the film. And, you know, the main guy um, from Cloudy Mountain, terrific as well. It's an enjoyable element of the film, and there are enjoyable elements here, just it's ruined by the glue that sticks it together. So if you've seen Lost in the Stars, and I know there's a lot of people have, it's quite a popular film right now, and it is one of the top five Chinese, uh, highest grossing Chinese movies of this year so far. If you've seen Lost in the Stars, what did you think of it? Is it something that you want to see? Leave a comment below. Tell me what you thought of it. Press like if you enjoyed this video. Otherwise, I'll catch you on our next Chinese movie review. See you later.